Tor or the Onion Router is a free and open source project for allowing anonymous communication. In this video, I want to discuss this technology and explain how it works. So if you're interested, stay tuned. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Hussein. In this channel, we discuss all sorts of software engineering by example. So if you want to become a better software engineer, consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you get notified every time. I upload a new video with that said, let's just jump into this agenda. What are we gonna do, talk about? So I wanna talk about, I'm gonna see some time code so you can jump to the interesting part of the video. You don't have to uh, listen to me babbling. So first of all, we're gonna talk about what can sniffers actually see when you make a request, right? What does that mean, right? What do, what do they see? Do they see your passwords, the username? We're gonna get debunk any theories out there okay we're going to talk about why do you want to use tor and why don't you just use a vpn instead right and we're going to talk about how tor works that's what most of the meat and potatoes is are potatoes are plural so you're going to use r okay english 101 so you learn english in this channel too guys it's not just uh, software engineering right so yeah trust me best english teacher ever okay we're gonna talk about more about tor and finally i'm gonna summarize this thing let's just jump into it so what does a normal request look like and then think of this a normal request like you're visiting a page google.com or you're making a get request with an api a rest api or graphql or or you're 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 going through the smtp protocol or a mqp protocol that's rabbit mq any request really boils down to this puppy which is nothing but a tcp beautiful packet with a port ip destination and the source and the source port right and then the piece of data you're sending that's all so now for simplicity in this video i am going to not use numbers but use letters instead just i'm gonna take off the port Okay, so the request will look like this. Okay, so as you just know that this is a TCP packet, essentially. Okay, so that's the B is the destination IP address. It could be Google. A is the source. Makes sense, right? So what if now if you want to send a request, what do people really see? If hackers or advertisement agencies that sniff your traffic somehow, right? Whether man in the middle or just run your ISP even running your, because they, they can just running their own routers and they can sniff packets. What do they see? They can always see where you're going and they can always see you because that's your source IP. They can see where you're going. You're going to google.com, youtube.com, or some political website. They can see that. They can see the IP address. Uh, what else they can see? They can not see the data if it's encrypted. If you're, you're like part of a TLS, after the handshake, everything is encrypted. And you, only you guys know this, the symmetry key to decrypt that stuff, right? It's an end-to-end -end encryption. So they cannot really read your password if, if there's an HTTPS padlock on your browser. That's impossible. Okay, unless there's a man in the middle attack, but I don't want to talk about it. But they can, can see that. They can see the ports. I didn't show them here, but they can see what service you're using, whether you're using SMTP or, or something else or HTTPS or any port. If there's a well known port, they can know what that what is that. And they can sell you ads based on that. So, like, oh, you're visiting this page, uh, this website a lot. You're going to this domain a lot. Even domain request request for to get the ip address of a specific domain they can see that it's unencrypted so that's public information that they can see there so they can see what domains you're visiting but that's it assuming everything is encrypted with https right this is it's 2019 guys nobody is browsing websites on a forum that is unencrypted anymore i don't know if you guys doing that but you better look that you're you're always using an encrypted website right all right, so that's how it looks like. I think eventually that other server will get that piece of information. So what can sniffers really see in a normal traffic? Obviously, we talked about they can see who you are. Their IP address is very visible, and they can locate you up to the city, really. Uh, sniffers know what IP address you access, and based on that, they can say, so, okay, this particular website sells, I don't know, 
chairs and you're interested in chairs so let's let's sell this guy some chair ads okay uh, most web traffic is actually encrypted with HTTPS and TLS, so they cannot really see what you're doing. Like if you're on Amazon, they cannot really see what did you buy. That's impossible, right? And uh, if you're Google, they do not they do not know what you're searching for. It's impossible. Google knows, and that they sell that information to people, obviously. Okay, routers and sniffers cannot read encrypted data. That we talked about that. And when using HTTP, anyone can sniff and read the data, right? Anyone with a router or sniffer, right? So if they can tap into that traffic somehow, they will see that data and they can read it because it's unencrypted. So that's the key here. If it's only HTTP or it's only SMTP, it's not encrypted. If it's only FTP instead of SFTP, then they can see the stuff, right? So very important stuff and we talk about a lot of encryption uh, we have a lot of encryption videos guys and TLS we talk about TLS I'm gonna reference the videos here if you're interested so why don't we just use a VPN what what why is this Tor thing All right what's wrong with the VPN okay when you're using a VPN sniffers do not know who you are anymore because you're going through the VPN and that VPN tunnels you to that right so it's, it's like almost like exactly like a proxy right and then you don't, they don't know, and then you, they encrypt it. So even if you're using HTTP, you're encrypted, you're good. But the VPN does know who you are, right? Yeah, so that, that solves the problem. But the anonymity problem is still there. Sniffers cannot read any HTTP or HTTPS traffic anymore. And that makes sense, right? Because VPN encrypts that. Right? They encrypt that traffic for you. So you're good. If you're using HTTP, you're good with VPN. Nobody will sniff that stuff, right? Unless the VPN is exposed. Uh, no way to find out if VPN is logging your activity or not, really, right? How do you trust those guys, right? You're, yeah, you pay this VPN company and they say, yeah, trust us and we're not selling your data or not logging on it, really. They're from California, this VPN company. That's why they talk like that. Okay, so no way to find out the VPN login information. Can I? Can you trust? It's just, just it's a trust issue. And we know that governments talk to the VPN companies. They can pull information, right? It's like, okay, this guy access this. Yeah, they can access these websites. Again, they, the VPN company can only see what you're visiting domain-wise and, and IPs, and that's pretty much it, right? Unless you're using HTTP, purely HTTP, then they can look at the data. But if you're HTTPS, that they cannot even see that. Okay, but the anonymity part still unsolved, and there is this NordVPN recent hack that happened, right? And then people freaking out of VPNs now. Nobody's wanting to use VPN anymore for some reason. Okay, meet Tor, and uh, what do what does Tor do? Oh, well, how does Tor help us? Like, and what it does is actually essentially, if you want to make requests from A to B, what it does is essentially it routes your traffic through multiple relay nodes until it gets the final destination. So that's what Tor does, right? In a nutshell, this is like a da -da -da -da, so it makes it very hard for people to and and it encrypts all packets as well in the process. So it's very hard to find out who you really are. Okay, so as to be to google.com this guy is the consumer this guy's whole is is the one who made the request okay and then eventually the packet receives this but this guy let's say call him x mr x is the is, is, is actually the one who made that request right so this is the meat and potato guys <laughs> let's jump into it right get ready get your tea your coffee and because it's gonna be until I understand this. Okay, I'm client A. I have installed a Tor client on my machine and now my, my Tor machine knows how to talk this Tor language and then let's do that. Let's start it. What do we do? The first step, right? We talked about these nodes, the relay nodes, right? How do we give this? The first thing, first thing we do, your client makes a request to what he calls Tor directory and Tor directory keeps track of a bunch of Tor nodes that are running on the wild, right? And that's like T1, T4, T5, T2, all of these Tor nodes. And then you make a request, it's good, hey, give me three nodes. And by default, it's three nodes, right? And uh, you give back T1, T2, T3. You get that, the three nodes back as a client, okay? Now you have three nodes. You're aware of these three nodes as a client, okay? 
That's very important. And then you get also some very important piece of metadata that we're going to use a lot here. It's called the circuit. Circuit ID. Let's call it seven. Random number. Okay. And that number is going to be used a lot. Okay. During this communication. And the circuit is essentially the communication. T1 to T2 to T3 is called one circuit. And the number stamping the circuit is called seven. Okay. We now these have these four metadata information. Next step, I know T1. T1, by the way, is the IP address here. I just didn't want to write the huge numbers. T2 is what? Is also the IP address. And T3 is another node. Okay. The first thing the client does here after printing these nodes is establish a symmetric key between each of these nodes, right? I'm going to agree with you, T1. Let's have, agree on a symmetric key. And if you guys are confused about what a symmetric key encryption is, I'm going to reference a video that we made here about encryption and TLS. So you're going to understand all of that stuff, right? So essentially, we, the client and the server, in this case, this is the server, are agreeing on a key to encrypt all their communication, right? So this guy starts communicates. Okay, let's agree on the key. This, call, this key is called the blue key. So now the blue key is here and the blue key is here. Nobody else knows about this, okay? It's a very, very interesting, very secure encryption algorithm to transfer this key. It's not as easy as, as it sounds like, but is there is a complex algorithm and mathematics behind it. Go watch that video if you're interested to know how do we come up with that key. But we do, nevertheless. So there is a blue key here, right? And then I establish the pink key with this guy, right? That's that, okay, I just called the pink key here, right? And then finally, there is the red key. So we have red, blue, and pink keys, right? On the T3 only knows about the red key, T2 only about the pink, and T1 only knows about me as a client. I know about all the three. That's very important thing. Okay, I know all these beautiful things. Let's do it. Okay. I want to send my data. This is my original packet, remember? A to B, destination IP address and source IP address. And then this is the piece of data. This is your get request. This is your post command. This is your GraphQL request. This is TLS handshake, anything, right? But there is a destination IP, source IP. That's what we care about. And we're here. What do we do? We take that packet before we send it we don't want to send this on the plain text what we don't do is like it says hey it's very dangerous to go out there right uh, in the wild of the internet well the wild wild internet let's encrypt things and i cannot this is a this is me i don't want people to know who i am so i'm gonna change a right to what to T3. Why T3? Why did you pick that? Because that's the last node that's going to communicate with this puppy, the final destination, which is B. Okay. So I'm going to change this guy, the source to be T3 and B will remain B. All right. That's the first piece of change that I'm going to make. And now I'm going to use that T3's key to encrypt that whole packet and insert it as the data for the next packet. So this is the data, and this is this is not encrypted, by the way. It's just painted as red, so you guys know, right? So what we want to do is this piece of data, which is actually, this is encrypted, right? Has the destination as T3 and the source as T2, because this will be sent by this guy, all right? So T2 is the source and T3 is is the destination okay so what do we do now take all that data consider treat it as data and encrypt it with t2's key which is the pink key and now what do we do we flip it right t2 is now the destination t1 is the source right because we know all these guys that's why i i can encrypt because i have all these guys ip addresses i have all these guys symmetric keys okay and then what we do, we do the final one, which is the blue key, the final node, which is called also the entry node. And then the T1 will have the, that's the destination. And that's me now. That's me. That's A. Now it's safe. Encrypted. We're good to go. Let's see what will happen. I'm going to send, this is the final product. That's what I have now. I'm going to send this safely across the internet. And now... If I send it, obviously, 
send it across this and this is the blue, right? If I'm gonna send it here, this guy knows who I am and that's by design, right? Tor nodes will, the entry Tor nodes will know who you are, okay? And that's, that's by design. So T1, so this packet will be sent to T1 and the T1 is destination and A, is the source so t1 actually knows the client here so y'all know me i'm the same og okay dr dre okay so now the og here is a and what do we do we take that piece right this is the piece of data that is encrypted with a blue key remember because that's the last key but guess what t1 does have the blue key so it can take that key decrypt it and it looks as says, oh, that's a nice packet. Oh, there's T2. T2. I'm supposed to communicate with that guy. Now, there's another piece of metadata here, which is inside this I didn't mention. It's called the circuit ID, which we talked about. It. The circuit ID number seven. And then now T1 will update its local entry. It says, okay, I'm supposed to communicate in circuit seven with this guy, T2. So it updates itself, okay? And the source is A. So the source node is A, I'm communicating with T2, right? And I cannot decrypt this thing. I don't know what it is. I'm supposed to send it. So it's gonna send it over to this guy. Send that back in. Take it, oh, this guy can actually decrypt it because it's the pink key, right? It has the pink key. So it will take, look at it, encrypt it, and we get the red data, this part, right? And then what we looks we looks at it says okay oh I'm supposed to send this to T3 now okay so T3 is my destination in circuit seven and T T1 is my source okay so that's always from and two okay and then we what do we do we send it over to T3 and T3 uses its key decrypt it to only find that is, this is the final destination. So it knows it's the exit node. It knows that it's supposed to communicate with B, which is, it could be Google, it could be anything, right? And this could be like, this is the initial TLS handshake, guys. TLS is slow as it is. Imagine encrypting all of that stuff. So you're gonna get triple the slowness. Is that even a word, slowness? Yeah. So it will be very slow. So B and T3, uh, and then you send that data, right so that's the actual data okay and now you can argue if this is like was just not encrypted you can just send it over and then people will just can see your data okay send it over right and you get the data so the server received the data it doesn't know who the original requester because that's wh that's why we changed that original request remember guys because now it says t3 otherwise the server will know who are we and we do not want that Okay, let's send up a response. Let's do the response, guys. This is interesting. So what we're gonna do is like respond, and the response will look a little bit different because the source is now B, the target is D3, because that's the only thing that the node knows, right? It knows T3. Okay, so it's gonna send it back, and that's the destination. So it receives the exit node knows that from the socket, which is the TCP connection that, oh, this socket belongs to circuit ID number seven, which I'm supposed to, this is a response, so I'm supposed to send it to T2. It knows there is always a table with all this beautiful stuff, as stateful, as a stateful, as a stateful uh, application can get, right? Because it has all this information stored in, it, in its application. So it knows that, oh, I'm supposed to send it to T2. So that's that was all of the questions like I, that I couldn't answer like how does it know to send it to where is this information stored so it stores locally because it it matched it before the first circuit actually created and knows the, the circuit 7 has supposed to send it to t2 okay so how do we do that first of all we encrypt it with our key okay and we make the target as t2 and the, the, and the source is T3, as us. And then, pew, send it. And this packet goes through the internet. Normally, just like any other packet. It's just like flipping, flipping through routers, like left and right, left and right. Just It's just a packet, right? And then eventually it reaches T2. And then T2 knows that it's a response, okay? So what it does, like, oh, I'm, I'm not supposed to do anything. Just encrypt it, change it to, to my original source data which is t1 i need to change it to t1 t2 
send it over. It's in that pink package. Get up, get the blue key. And oh, same thing. T1, I got it from T2. I'm supposed to encrypt it because it's a response. Encrypt it back, add another additional layer of encryption. And just, whew, I'm supposed to add A now here. So let's send A the, the data, right? And so that nobody looked at the data. You send the results to A, and then you as a client, you know it's a response. Oh, you know the first node is, is the blue key, so I need to decrypt that. Let's look at that. What, what's inside it? Ooh, I know the pink key because I, I, I have all the keys as a client. Decrypt. We got that. Decrypt the red. We got it. And we got the data. And we really don't care about this one because that's exactly the flipped of what we sent, right? So we got it, guys. We got the data. And then you do whatever you want with it. Whew. Man, that was tough, wasn't it? Let's talk about more about Tor. So client knows all about the Tor nodes in the circuit. That's a very important thing, right? So the client talks about all the Tor nodes and would knows everything about the Tor nodes that is in the circuit that is requested. And Another thing I didn't forget to mention is like this circuit changes after 10 minutes because if it's compromised, then bad things can happen. So it's always ephemeral. And uh, each Tor message that you, you, know, you send, this, this gradient cell that we talked about, it's called a cell. And there is a lot of header there. There is some information in the Tor. They have the circuit ID we talked about. There is a, uh, a stream ID. There's a bunch of other stuff as well. With, with the message that goes with the message so we can tell, right? Because each message can be broken into smaller, smaller messages or cells, okay? And then each message sent contains the circuit ID. We talked about that. And circuit ID can be used to know the from and to, to node, obviously, guys, right? So that's why this is, this is like the question, like, how do I know where should I send this, right? Circuit ID. Guard node is the first node. Exit node is the last. And Tor directly is where all the node metadata reside. So if someone decided to block Tor, if you're trying to use Tor browser and uh, it won't be blocked, your ISP can block it. They just they can just block Tor directory. Sorry, you cannot go to Tor, right? Because you, the, moment, the first request you're making is that to Tor to directory. And if the Tor directory is blocked, tough luck, right? And I mean, you can go through a VPN and then go through Tor. Oh my God, how many encryption layers do you need? Talk about paranoia right there. Okay. Uh, summary, what can sniffers really see? We talked about that, right? It's like they can only see, in case in an encrypted HTTPS, they can only see the domains because unfortunately DNS requests are not encrypted, so they can see that. We talked about why do you know Tor instead of VPNs? Because VPNs are the companies, and um, it's not it's not as uh, as open source as this, right? This is like run by people and companies, and and companies can be bought, right? And unlike Tor, and we talked about how Tor works. I bored you to death with the technical details. <laughs> and finally, we talked about more about Tor. Hope you enjoyed this short video. I don't know if how how long was it, but I was really expecting to be longer than that, right? I'm happy. I'm 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 focusing on my content now. I usually talk a lot about a lot of topics, but you guys made me just focus and and get to the point quicker. And so I'm listening to you guys. Love you so much. Stay awesome. See you in the next one. Goodbye.